across the border. Now we're southbound on, uh, what highway is this? Uh, 395. We're southbound on 395, headed into uh, Colville. Colville? Coal Mount? Coal? Coal something. Yeah, I think I'm fried for the week. It's been an interesting, I can't say it was a boring two weeks. Can't say that, that's for darn sure. Yeah, no problems at all with this customs. Called dispatch. Let them know that I had a cross here and they called the broker and got all that stuff lined up. Will I deliver today? I doubt it. Unless they're open later, then I think most places stop unloading at 3. So right now my estimate is 3.30 I'll get there. And if traffic is like this, it may be later than 3.30. We'll see if the scale is open. Closed! Yay! That saves me five minutes. Wow. Well, still 3.30. It doesn't add time to it. To my estimation. And this scale is open quite often. Got another two hours and 45 minutes to drive. Colville, yeah, okay. I was right. So many towns named Cole. Isn't it in Lethbridge, Saskatchewan? You have Colville and Colmont on either side of Lethbridge, one to the east, one to the west, something like that. I guess coal has been found in many places and the towns get named after it. Although this town is more of a lumber town now than a coal town. Okay. This is the town where the Garmin directs me through town the wrong way. Hey, there's a Pacific Pride right here. Don't need fuel, not yet, but I don't think that's a commercial though. Not a commercial Pacific Pride. Oh, commercial card block right here on the left. Huh? So there's two Pacific Prides. I don't know where. It says there's card lock. Ah, right behind the building there. Cool little area. It's raining pretty hard, which means... Hudson and Kootenai are gonna, and uh, the Coquihalla are probably just getting hammered by snow. While I was going over the Hudson, it was not snowing yet, but I predict it will be by now. At least I didn't have to chain up. That would have sucked. Go, go to the wrong border. Have to go over the Hudson twice. With this load. One of those days, one of those weeks. Yeah, my week started going strange exactly a week ago, right? Well, a little, a little less because it started going wacky on Friday. So this is day number seven. 
It seems like every other day there's been some wackiness. At least uh, work days. It's Friday I was wacky and then Saturday, Sunday off. Monday was okay. Man. Tuesday I was in the ditch. Wednesday was okay. Today I was customs issues, which means tomorrow should be a nice boring day. Yes, tomorrow will be a boring day. It has been confirmed. Just a boring day home, that's all I want. Just a boring drive home. I guess that was Kettle Falls. Colville is still coming up ahead. I am thirsty. I have water and my arms reach just behind me, so once I'm on a nice straightaway and I feel comfortable reaching toward the back, I'm gonna grab myself a water. Coming traffic to reach back there. I mean, it's probably safe to do so, but I, I like being safe. Take all the precautions I can. And even with me taking all the precautions, apparently I still end up in the ditch. There we go. No oncoming. Reach for it. Got it. And we're good. No lights in the U.S. Always crazy. Over the passing lane. Let everybody pass. I'm going speed limit though. In fact, I'm going one mile over the speed limit. I know how dare I speed by one mile, but try not to. If I'm ever going more than two kilometers or two miles over the speed limit, something's wrong. I misjudged the downhill, I missed the speed limit sign, Something something's wrong if I'm two over or more than two over. Because the speed will fluctuate up and down, two or three kilometers up and down, but my rule is two. As long as I stay within two either direction, doing good. Sutka's rule is 10. 10 over is a no-no. This way, if I'm only doing one or two over, and I misjudge a hill and I'm going too fast, I'm still within set goal limits, even though a police officer might still give me a ticket, even if I am within set goal limits. But why stress yourself out and try to drive right at the limit? A nice relaxing drive, a lot less work, don't have to worry too much about the small little hills up and down, just relax and enjoy the rain. I like the sound of rain, it's always just so relaxing. Spanish Prairie Road. Interesting. Shall I read out names? Uh, Valley West Side Road. I would drive Jess absolutely nuts if I do that. Probably drive you guys nuts too. I read names all the time some really interesting names sometimes. It's like, what 
what is in that name? Why, why is something called what it's called? <coughs> Spanish Prairie. Here in northern Washington? Weird. There's got to be a reason. So many names and they all have a reason for their, for their name. So much forgotten history, I guess. It's so different. <laughs> it feels a lot like a uh, uh, Creston area where you have the flat land in the valley. This is a completely different valley than that, but it feels like that. I'm just trying to think. In Canada, this valley probably goes up to Grand Forks. That'd be my guess. I haven't really looked on a map to see where the valleys go, but I'd say this is part of the same valley as Grand Forks. A little bit too fast there to slow down. Or, I was too slow to slow down. Taco Bell, KFC, I must be hungry. Entering Colville, there we go. Hey, here's a Sutco. Sutco. Don't think that's a chip truck, I think that's residual, which... I think is like bark and any kind of anything that's burnable. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Negative. At the roundabout, take the first exit. It's so noisy. Uh, every now and then, every now and then, I forget and leave the fan on. And nice and cool in here. Noisy and cool. Hmm. How long has that fan been on? Last downhill was just before I started recording, so probably 15, 20 minutes that's been on. Probably does no harm, but noisy. And fuel economy, it probably is worse for fuel economy. Spinning that fan is a little bit extra. At the roundabout, take power the second that engine exit needs. to US 395. Told you, Garmin, no. They're going straight, okay. Signal so that minivan knows we're going here. All right, Garmin, you can reroute me now. You avoid going through downtown this way. There you go, you've rerouted me. Route, route. Route, route. See, rerouted, but it's a route. I can't get the right, uh, I can't make up my mind, I guess. I, I, Three quarters of a mile. Enter the roundabout. Pronounce it differently depending on how I'm using it. I think that's because I've lived in so many places. My accents are all mixed together. No parking anytime. But you could park off there on the side of the road in that gravel patch. 
have a nice nap there. Don't think that'd be illegal. <coughs> Although the signs say no parking anytime. They might be able to At legally about, take the first exit. Legally give you a ticket for sleeping there. I don't think they would, but they probably have the power to. <coughs> Excuse me. Twenty-five. We're all stopping at the roundabout. At the roundabout, take the first exit to South Main Street. Yes, I like that idea. Let's follow Garmin's directions. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We will uh, see you guys tomorrow. And hopefully I have nothing exciting to tell you. Nothing exciting at all. Just sheer boredom. There we go. And we're back. Bypassed all of downtown, which can be really slow and painful. 395 South, all the way to uh, Spokane, and then we'll take I-90 to Coeur d'Alene, and then deliver there, Continue either today or tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed, hit that thumbs up.